So Kevin and his wife are a few weeks away from having a baby, and uh, it was a beautiful morning today. It was cold, high pressure system moved in, and uh, his wife was nice enough to let him get one more hunt in until he's totally locked down. Um, so Kev gave it one more shot this morning, and immediately as it started to get light, he had does around him, and then uh, right about 7.30, he had a nice uh, 10 point move in on him, and he got a shot on it. Um, so we got the text from him this morning. Jake and I were a little under the weather, we'll put it. Uh, it was my wife's birthday party yesterday. A little Oktoberfest. Yeah, and um, so anyway, so we decided to come up and help him. He's a little unsure of the shot. Uh, we think it's we think it's good based on what the deer did. I, I think he hit it better than he thinks. Um, he says he said that the deer stopped about a hundred yards. He could see blood uh, on the deer, and then watched him bed multiple times in, in a close proximity. So he saw feels pretty good about saw that. Saw some blood on the side of the deer with his range finder, so the deer was definitely bleeding pretty good. Um, saw bed down and get back up it was definitely uncomfortable and uh, he decided to just pull out of there and, uh, and wait it's about uh, 4 30 now and uh, we'll be there in probably 20 minutes or so so he's given it plenty of time he did everything right and uh, I think it's a dead deer so uh, he, he definitely deserves it he's worked his ass off um, so anyway we're gonna go find this thing and uh, hopefully it all works out so we'll see There he is. There's the mighty hunter. There's my helping hands. How are you? Long day, waiting? Long afternoon, sitting around waiting. Yeah, I bet. Uh, does were looping around behind me, headed towards my ground scent and my wind. And uh, as soon as they started to get close to that, and I heard them get in about that area, and they held up, as you would expect. The jury, they were checking it out. And then I hear something more substantial that was a single deer coming down the main trail which is where i was expecting you know a buck to come i'm sitting between two is he going into the wind uh, he's going with the wind so i'm sitting uh, i've marked a couple buck beds on north and south of where i set up uh for the this west northwest wind we have spring scouting a couple years ago and had good bucks on camera this summer and i'm basically set up where they do the where I would expect them to do their J-hook. Whether or not they go left or right, doesn't really matter. So I got a big one coming down the pipe. I can't I can't tell what it is yet. It just sounds like a big solo deer. And he's coming in slow. Um, and then also, all of a sudden, one of the does blows. Just once. And I don't hear him run off or anything. So he holds up for a second. Then he starts moving again. Then a doe blows again. But they don't go anywhere. He does the same thing. And the, the does go you know, quiet then all of a sudden he works in just nice and slow and I can you know it's just starting to get light enough to see so I can eventually see the white rack moving above the tops of the cattails yeah so he's going through basically cattails and swamp grass and by the time he gets to about 25 yards from me it's shooting light I can tell he's a nice 10 point and uh, then all of a sudden the does, the does hadn't made a peep for about 10 minutes just checking my ground scent and they all of a sudden lose their shit and start going crazy. Maybe they were blowing it in. I don't think so. I think they were blowing, they were, well I know they were blowing at me. Um, so they were directly behind me downwind and the doe just starts blowing and blowing and blowing. You, you know, when you get an agitated doe it probably blew 20 times. That's the worst. And the buck is just, the buck can't smell me or see me. It's just looking at the does all confused, like, what are you freaking out about? <laughs> and three times the buck sniffs the air. He's like, what? And he just, he has no idea what the problem is. Um, but those things start to bound off. I can hear him start to bound. And during this time frame, when he's staring at them, I'm up in a six inch diameter tree with no cover. And there's no <laughs> trees around. It's just wide open and he's 25 for me, so I'm just slowly reaching for my bow, and at that point, when they started to bound off, I had my bow, and I'm just waiting for him to make a decision, because he's facing me at 25, so I have no shot, 
So I'm just waiting for him to decide if he's going to keep coming down the pipe or if he's going to turn. If he turns, I'm going to get a shot. Either way, I'm going to get a shot. So he starts to just slowly turn around just to slink back the direction he came. And at that point, I swung around the tree, drew on him, and he just naturally kind of hesitated in like a little opening in the cattails, like a stump. So I didn't stop him because he was already on, always he was yeah. already on edge. So uh, I just had to guess the range. Yeah. I guessed 30, let it go, ranged it after the fact at 27. So I was pretty close. Um, but I'm guessing he took a step when I let the arrow go because I clearly hit way back, and I think I hit back and high. Yeah. And he really weird reaction gut liver type of reaction he bounded about 20 25 yards and then kind of stopped looked back and then he just walked off slow and he was not that far away so i quickly grabbed and knocked another arrow ranged him he was at 60 and walking really slow at sort of sideways not directly away from me so perfect broadside so i quickly slide my <laughs> sight to 62 yards and draw you know give him a, a grunt to stop him and just let it fly hail mary i don't know if i hit him or not on that shot it was a long shot and he kind of jumped not like he got hit jumped just the sound the noise of the yeah. bow and everything and again he bounded only like 10 15 yards and then stopped and then just kept walking i threw a grunt at him because he looked confused yeah, so i threw was... a grunt at him to see if he was you know might grab his attention he didn't even look back so i only did one i didn't want to blow him out of there and um he just meandered off another 30 yards he hit the thick stuff and he was he disappeared for about five minutes and here i am kind of thinking i think i missed him a whole shot but i'm not quite sure he looked like he was hurt a little bit the tail was down and flickering um he just he didn't look normal but he didn't look severely hurt and then all of a sudden he pops out of the thick stuff uh, there's a couple big trees right on the edge, and he beds down right below one of the big trees. I mean, if, a hundred yards away. I think if you missed so. him, he would have gotten out of there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just, we'll see. We'll find out if there's two holes, and when we if we do find them. Um, but I mean, you might have missed the second shot. I just think he's yeah. acting like he's hit. Oh, I mean, you uh, know he's yeah. Hit. yeah, he's always oh, hit. Well, yeah. So I've already captured this, but you know, he the next two hours he. He kept getting up and taking a couple of steps, turning around and rebedding. So you could tell he was uh, uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And throughout that process, at one point, I I didn't have my binoculars with me, so I just had my rangefinder. And um, so you know, 100 yards out, it's kind of far for a rangefinder to see in a lot of detail. But I could see blood in the gut region on the exit pole side. Yeah, very clearly, a good amount of blood. Yeah, um, I think we're gonna find him. So he eventually around 10 disappeared in the thick stuff, but just he never could go more than like three, four steps without laying back down. And so he did that a couple of times into the thick stuff. So he probably went another 20, maybe 30 yards. And I heard him break sticks one more time around 10 o'clock and then it went quiet. Never heard or saw him again. It wasn't too windy to, to not be able to hear him or anything. Yeah. So I feel like my gut, no pun intended. <laughs> thinks that he's laying right there yeah um, i'm just hoping that nothing else whether it's a, a person since i went and grabbed lunch or a coyote or whatever went in there and bumped him or he just got up and meandered <coughs> off on his own and i don't know how much blood we're gonna find there was a decent amount on him so i we could have a decent blood trail um but the good thing is i know right where to start we don't have to start at the arrow i know where the bed was you know you got a pasture, so that's good. And I know try I and find your arrow just to see. We'll pass the arrow on the way in. Uh, I have a feeling we're not. It's going to be in, buried in the ground, but All right. I know where both arrows landed. So. Well, cool. I think we'll find them. Or you can light a roll that you hunted in a six-inch tree. yards of this that's no problem <laughs>
Okay. So 100 yards north of this tree, 120 yards. Okay. It's like a green bush up there. So what are they doing now? How do you know to sit here? Do you just guess? <laughs> Well, I spring scouted this three years okay. ago, and all these big trees back here in the yeah. middle of nowhere have big beds under them. Okay. And there's a rub line following the southern edge of this thick timber okay. and it, on, a, on a big trail. Yeah. The biggest rubs in this whole section went right down that trail to these beds. Okay. There was like four of them, and they were all like thigh to waist high. Hmm. So that told me that the biggest deer in this piece uses that trail and he beds back here okay. on a west wind is what I guessed. Yeah. Huh. Hold on, Kev, which tree was it? That little crooked skinny one there, just to the left of the short bush. Okay. And this main trail comes down the middle of these cattails and then they split off. Yeah. There's beds all back here under all these trees. And the headwaters of the creek is right back here too where it's all cattails back there. You can't walk through that. Okay. The deer can obviously. But the creek starts here and it flows both directions. I think that's the it's called creek that way. I don't know if it's called the same thing this way, but Ooh, we're gonna have to edit that out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Oh well, that's or a saddle for that matter. A lot of good cover in that tree. <laughs> yeah, so I was right underneath those little branches. And then the, he was, see this bush and this spindly stump to the left of it? He was between those. Was okay. Right at him. Wow. From up there. No. What? Got to be in a tree back here. Be in a tree. Well, we came down this, this trail like this off that hard edge into this marsh and he stopped right there and that's when the does started blowing I'm up there so he turned and he walked this way right to here I think he was standing in that bed when I shot I shot right here, the arrow should be here if it's here 8 yards of the fig tree, yeah. he was bedded right under that Okay, and then he here. back behind me okay. to the right a little bit of that. Okay. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. There is blood right here. It's dark. Is that that's liver blood, then, right? Oh, that's liver for sure. He's dead. He's got it. He looks good. <laughs> good. So he was like right here for that second shot. Okay. This was, so he was like right here, Jake, for that 60 yarder that I, that Hill Mary I threw, right where I'm standing. Dead deer. Oh, he didn't go far at all. Oh yeah, nice job, Chubb. Right by the ladder stand. Welcome to Michigan. <laughs> nice deer, Kev. He's a 10, Jake. Barely. <laughs> nice deer. Oh, he's good and stiff. He's been dead for a long time. Oh, he's not as far back as I thought. Oh, yeah, it's a, yeah. No, that's the exit. How is that? Because he What's was facing. What's up with his neck there? Oh, I did hit him twice. Oh, you, <laughs> that second neck shot was lethal. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, how did that not kill him right away? <laughs> I actually hit him twice. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, I got him once in the neck apparently. <laughs> He's really stiff. He died a while ago. Yeah. You did that. You got to use up all your tags. You got a combo got no, I got another. I got another buck tag. Oh, do you? So you bought a general doe license? Yeah. Go down there. Is that on a timer? Or you got no, a it's just a video. So. Oh. Okay. We'll stop it.
Maybe that was my first shot. So we hit him twice. Can't tell. Trying to. What is that? That's not a hole right there, is it? Did you hit him the first time here? That's what I'm wondering. So he was he was like this on the first shot. Yeah. So that must be what happened through the neck. Here's one. What side was facing you when you shot? This This was the first shot, the other side was the second shot. So there's a hole here. So he was facing that way and he turned around that and was went probably the other your way. first shot hit right there then. This is probably my first shot. Yeah, probably start dragging here. Gotta get it out. You wanna help him out? Well, we made it out. That wasn't That's bad. Pretty quick, actually. That wasn't bad at all. What time is it? Got out before dark. Well, an hour and a half or something. Thirty, I bet. You didn't go far. Good job, Kev. Congrats. Thanks. Yeah. It's a nice buck. Fill the buck tag, Public Land, Michigan. The wife will be happy because you can relax. Yeah. <clears throat> She, she's kind of responsible for this deer. She let you hunt today. Yeah, you yeah, said she, so cool. she scouted the spot with him too, so she, she kind of found the spot. So, so she's probably got to get credit for this one. Yeah. Nice sure. buck. Whew. All right. Another swamp buck in the bag.